I initially started gardening with my grandfather who was in his 90s when he came to live with us and he had been a, uh, a farmer during the depression and with him I planted my first garden and I just loved it, you know. Basically I've been growing a garden ever since. This land was purchased back in the 60s, the mid 60s. And Greg and his then wife Edie came to Lopez and they bought this acreage and other pieces that then connected to it. And it includes Irene's land and Zach's land and Edie's land and we now connect to my son Raven's land too. So most of my children are right here. Basically, you know, what I've been doing ever since I've been on Lopez is just growing gardens. It's my favorite place to be. And when other things don't seem right in the world, my garden always feels good, <laughs> like the place to be. And I like uh, organic gardening and I like feeding the family. And I don't do a very uh, traditional style. I basically just let my garden seed itself and I take away what doesn't work and leave what works and sometimes that is successful and sometimes it isn't. But I remember seeing a, a documentary once about an old, old Russian woman and she was a survivor of extreme poverty but she said, I always have my kale and that's where I, I come from that kind of ideal is that I don't need fancy stuff. I can grow and regrow and regrow my kale and my chard and I let all the flowers recede and I just feel like it's my uh, survival, um, you know, plan for any time in my life. <laughs> At this particular garden where I've lived now for quite a few years with Greg, I've been able to spread my wings a little and I have a beautiful little vineyard with just two rows, but I take good care of it in hopes that someday I will have the perfect grapes for wine. Also, I have raspberries, beautiful raspberry patch that's separate from the main garden. We have a lot of fruit trees. We have peach trees, cherry trees, uh, many different apple trees, nut trees. My joy this year is my tomatoes. My tomatoes are like 13 feet high in my greenhouse. I grow a lot of peppers and I dehydrate them and grind them up and save them. So I, I eat peppers year round from my garden and uh, the, I, you know, I throw the peppers, mixed pepper, uh, into almost everything we make <laughs> for dinners. It feeds us pretty well, so we're, we're happy. And I use most of those things for saving for the winter, including dehydrating and canning some. I'm kept pretty busy year round <laughs> with everything to do with this land. I love bouquets and I work for Susan at Arbor Down and she makes very professional bouquets and they're beautiful and she grows flowers just for special occasions but I'm okay with just a simple bouquet. I always have fresh flowers in my house. We live pretty self-sufficiently here. We get a dozen eggs or more per day. During the winter I take my goats out and they forage for salal and in the, in the summer months I feed them different leaves from lots of different trees. They love willow so I grew a willow hedge and I harvest fresh willow for them every morning and I try not to feed them anything that's not organic. I feel very fortunate to have my family close. We're, I, don't, I think it's kind of like an ideal situation. We're all very much in love with each other and we celebrate together and we party together. We do traveling together and I feel like we have um, all the components for uh, you know, <laughs> a pretty, pretty good life here to celebrate and enjoy the beauty of this amazing Lopez Island. We've 
sailed into Fish Bay and, uh, and tied up in an old derelict dock. And we got off the boat and started walking up the road. And 15 minutes later, I said, I'm gonna live here. We hadn't even seen anybody. There was just something about Lopez that said, I'm gonna live here, that was it. This is 68, 1968. And we got the money to buy this piece of property that we're on right here now. And getting here to this island and being lifelong fascinated with Native American life and culture, I obviously turned on to the Northwest Coast. And lo and behold, Bill Holm was down at uh, Camp Nor'wester, you know, carving every summer. It's uh, hard to be around Bill Holm and not be totally inspired by the Northwest Coast uh, people and by the art of the Northwest Coast people, you know. So anyway, that got me started. I said, uh, uh, where do you get the tools, you know, to, to do this carving? And he says, you have to make them, man. And so I thought, oh, wow, okay, well, I'll do that, you know. So I uh, set up and uh, made my tools, you know, and people, the carvers would see them and they say, oh, God, I wouldn't mind one of them, man, make me one of them, you know. And, uh, well, anyway, after uh, um, a little while, I thought, I gotta get into this or get out of it, you know. Then I set up in a, you know, kind of a semi-manufacturing mode and started manufacturing the tools. And um, in the end, I uh, made thousands of tools and sold them all over the world, but mostly on the Northwest Coast and to a lot of Native people, a lot of the top-end carvers. They also helped in the revival of those crafts by the Natives because the natives had lost so much in that process. I'm glad that I have um, you know, helped with carving tools for schools for the native people and stuff like that. And now the native people are standing on their own. You know, They're pretty darn strong and they're coming on even stronger. The tools in the Northwest Coast are largely adze and crooked knife. They come in various curves. This is what I call a standard bend. And the interesting thing is it's like a French curve. So every radius can be done with this one tool. This uh, piece is going to be the sun, and, um, and it's uh, made as part of a triptych that I have going on uh, that I call the human universe. We have the sun to warm us, we have the moon to you know, cheer us through the nights, and uh, we have the earth to nurture us. This is cedar. It's uh, old growth cedar from Canada, and the moon I carved out of yellow cedar because it just seemed more appropriate. The moon was uh, painted with iridescent paints that show up the light and so reflects the moon. The piece on the bottom is the rock, Lopez. On top of that is the wolf, that's me. And I'm holding my son, uh, Zach, who's uh, coho salmon. And on top of that is the otter, and uh, that's Irene. And she's got her daughter, Summer Moon, on one side and her son, Cody, on the other hand, in her, in her paws there. And above that is the frog. Frogs are everybody's friend. Above that is the kestrel hawk, and that represents the business. And out of the ear of the hawk is my first wife, Edie, who's busy sparrow. And then on top of the hawk is uh, the Northwest Coast carver taking his tools and going away to carve. Out of the mouth of the carver is uh, a raven holding the sun disc. That's our sun raven. And on top of that is a cedar bark head ring for my daughter, Cedar Bow and the headdress uh, frontlet represents native people. So that's this pole. And I was glad I did it before I had five grandchildren that I have to figure out how to put in there too, you know. So <laughs> anyway.